Hi, this is Isaac returning with the second half, uh, the second 15 questions of the e-commerce masterclass with the Winter paper uh, of 2014. Uh, question uh, 11, question paper 11. Uh, we're starting at question 16. Um, a company applied here to build a supermarket on the edge of town near River, and they need position, permission from the local government. In order to gain approval, the company agreed to build a bridge across the river near the supermarket. Here, they want us to identify as, uh, what would be included in the social cost benefit study of this application, which would not be included. So, um, sorry, sorry, not what would be included, uh, what would be included in the social cost benefit study of this application, but would not be included in the private calculation. So here, we're looking for an externality. The first three options are not examples of externalities. They're all examples of, um, factors that would affect, um, a kind of value that would affect people engaged in the direct economic exchange. However, the value of time saved by people, um, the value of time saved by people using the new bridge to get to work in town is clearly kind of an external benefit. It's not really helping the supermarket um, and the bridge um, in the supermarket, but the people who are getting across the bridge, not to use the supermarket, are going to have an external benefit. So D here is the answer. Uh, Moving on to question 17, we have a good uh, is most suitable to be provided by the market if it's uh, not a public good, basically. So we're looking for something that shows the qualities of or the opposite of public goods. Normally, this question would be asking what would a public good be? What would be um, non-excludable and non-rivalrous consumption? So here we're just looking for the opposite. The answer very clearly here is B. Uh, something that's excludable and rival is very good to be provided by the market because you've got people consuming it and everyone needs to buy it they want to consume it. Question 18. Uh, in moving towards the market economy, government price controls have been removed, and in the diagram below, we see the government initially setting a maximum price here. We've got eight. Uh, the government is setting um, the effective maximum price of 10, essentially. Uh, so what's the effect on price and quality of the government removed the maximum price? Sorry, talking about maximum price, not minimum price, my apologies. The maximum price here is going to be six. We know that the maximum price of the effect of to be below the equilibrium price, uh, i.e. you want to, you want to stimulate demand, so you want demand to outstrip supply. So the minimum price is going to be six mark here, so we're going to see an increase in the price from six to eight, from so the equilibrium price we remove the price control. What's going to do? Well, it's going to remove the source. The source of your is at six, demand is greater than supply. The shortage is this, this kind of distance here, this quantity. When you move up to there, move the price price to eight, you remove the shortage, you get an increase in supply because more people are willing to supply the product, you also have a contraction in demand because the price is increasing. Um, so therefore, C is the answer. Apologies for the confusion of getting between that and uh, minimum prices. Remember here, 10 here would be a minimum price. You're trying to get firms to charge above that point in order to basically create um, the short, uh, reduced demand uh, for a product. Okay, question 19. Now here we've got a diagram showing the production possibility curves of two countries. We've got country X and country Y. They can both produce food and they can both produce clothes. So which case is going to be about two countries? Well, here we're looking for what's the definition of an absolute advantage. So a country which has an absolute advantage can just produce more of one good than the other. So here country X would have an absolute advantage in food. And country X would in fact also have an absolute advantage in clothes. If they dedicated all their resources towards it, they'd be able to produce even more. What's it have compared to the advantage in? Well, this relies on your understanding of opportunity cost. Um, and here we understand that country X is actually going to have a comparative advantage in clothes. Um, y has, I'm sorry, Y has a comparative advantage in clothes. Here it's kind of quite obvious to see if 600 to 500 is much uh, kind of smaller than the difference between 500 units and 500 units and 1,000 units of food there. So it's clear the country is going to have this kind of bad advantage in food, while country Y is going to have it in clothes. Uh, the opportunity cost for country uh, Y producing an extra kind of 100 units of clothes is much less than the opportunity cost here. Um, and therefore, we can say bad advantage, and that's the advantage of food simply for producing way more food. Question 20. Here we've got a diagram showing the effect of removing a tariff on imports of sugar industry as we know a tariff is a tax on imports. So here we can see world supply price being there. And when they improve the tariff, um, the tariff has been in place to put it up to 50, size of that. What's the loss of producer surplus, the domestic 
So domestic refusal number includes versus supply and supply. And at this price, uh, there's supply there, and they have a consumer surplus of um, this size here. And when the primary refuse, uh, the tariff, sorry, they're producing this size here. We've got PT to there. And up to there, that kind of triangle shape there. Um, when they actually produce, take tariff away, move back to the supply price P, you can see you, your consumer surplus is really only be this little area there. Really not very much. So what have they lost? Well, they've lost this area PT, P, U, P, this kind of little weird shape there. Kind of the difference between that big triangle and this little triangle. So again, just as you identify consumer demand, you're really understanding the kind of diagrammatic implications of having a tariff. And you only really want to focus on this area here. Because as we know, when tariffs are in play, in this case, we never actually recheck equilibrium in the market. Question 21. What must be the results for a country of a rise in its export prices related to simple prices? Uh, when you have that as simple, you get improvement in terms of trade. You know, in terms of trade is the ratio of export sprinkles. We want it to be high, so we want export prices to be more. We want to get more value from exports. And if you get export prices rising, then it's quite clear that you're going to have an improvement in your terms of trade. Kind of that's rise on definition. It's to do with the ratios of value between uh, imports. Question 22. Uh, we have a country importing exponents. Sorry. Uh, a country imports export components, which is used in the production of electrical goods for the domestic market. And we have the country experiencing a rise in incomes. What's likely to happen to the price of these electric goods in the country's balance of trade? Well, the rise in incomes mean we're probably going to see it worse in terms of the balance of trade because people are just importing more goods from abroad. Uh, however, what's going to happen when we get rising incomes? Well, uh, people are going to demand more from abroad. So the price of these electrical goods is going to uh, increase because the price of imports overall is going to increase. So this country importing components, which is such a much because the component price is going to rise because the cost of imports. Um, we know that uh, we're going to see an increase in the price of electric goods and also a worse in the balance of trade because we're importing basically. Question 23. Here we've got a table giving us figures for household spending in the UK between 2008 and here, 2010. Nominal household spending and real household spending. Now, what's the difference between nominal and real? Well, nominal doesn't take account of inflation, real household, uh, real household spending does. So here, although households are clearly spending more because of inflation, they're not actually spending necessarily as much more as these figures are initially telling us uh, that, that, that it's falling, but actually here they're not spending more, they're spending less. So they're spending a lot less than they actually were because of inflation. Take uh, here, the increase is not nearly as much as it is under nominal figures. So real takes account of inflation, nominal does. So what can be concluded from all households bought more goods and services than they That's not necessarily the case. Remember, these are just kind of total household spending. We're saying across all households, some may not have what they have. We can't really that the data. Households saved more in 2008 than 2010. Well, again, difficult to conclude because we don't know how much incomes were. We know what consumption was, but we don't know what incomes were. So we can't really make conclusions about savings. Living standards being lower in 2009, well, it's quite difficult to quantify these living standards. Um, but that's a little bit complicated. Um, what are we thinking about D? Well, D here, C, sorry, inflation being higher in 2010 than in 2009. Well, we know that inflation has to be higher uh, because of the mere fact that uh, it hasn't gone up by nearly as much. So we know that inflation has to have gone up. Um, the only answer it can be, and it's the right answer because 846,000 to 855,000 is not the same as 858,000. We know that there has to be some increase in inflation between 2000, not from 2009 to 2010. Inflation has to be higher. 24. In the diagram AS1, um, here we have only long run hybrid supply one. What long run hybrid supply two? What's going to cause the shift? Well, we're looking for something that's increasing the supply side of the economy. Uh, all of these would increase the demand side of the economy, consumer spending, inflation, and net export. Whereas an increase in price would would affect supply. The long run average supply increases when we have an increase in price. Question 25. Here we have a table showing an index of consumer prices. Um, by 2005 is equal to 100 marks. Often, we kind of use figures in economics with indexes. 
and for a number of countries we've got there, 2009, 2010, 2011 figures, which countries experienced the lowest fall in the real value of money between these two periods. They were looking for kind of the biggest, uh, lowest rate of fall. And we can clearly see here that the, the figures here are staying rather stable for Switzerland compared to all the others. The others are fairly volatile. Therefore, it has the lowest rate of fall. Uh, again, just looking at trends, looking at these kinds of figures is, is very important to the kind of be able to interpret practice doing that kind of data interpretation there. Not that uh, question 26. National inflation rates vary widely, but they have declined for most countries in recent years. Which combination might best explain these declining inflation rates? Well, increasing international inflation competition and reduced world incomes definitely could explain these kind of declines in inflation rates. Uh, the more competitive they are, the more prices are likely to be stable. And the juice world incomes means you're going to get less likely important inflation. Um, if everyone's buying less around the world, you're going to get less um, driven from export and import markets. Question 27. Why is a balance of payments deficit inflation problem for economy with a fixed exchange rate? Well, fixed exchange rates mean they have to raise uh, interest rates and very reduce interest rates. Or country, if they have fixed exchange rates, they have to keep them stable. Well, and they use that by sometimes often they um, have to release foreign exchange reserves on the market to keep it stable. So if you have a balance of payments deficit, you might get a decrease in your foreign reserves as you have to kind of give them away in order to keep exchange rates stable when you can't use interest rates. Here we're assuming that they're not using their interest rates in this situation. Finally, the last two questions here. We've got question 28. What is most likely to cause Australia's exchange rates to depreciate? So we need something that's either going to um, kind of increase uh, supply of Australian dollars um, on the market or uh, foreign foreign demand uh, for, well, kind of supply of terms of demand for other countries' currency. And that's going to be to do with imports. So we need looking for either an increase in ex imports or a decrease in exports. Uh, here, we don't really have anything that's showing a decrease in demand for exports, but we do have, A, an increase in Australia's demand for imports. Australians are demanding more foreign reserves to supply more of the Australian dollar on the markets, and that's going to cause depreciation in interest rates. We've kind of had that quite a few times throughout the course. Here, 29, with exchange rates of four Egyptian pounds to one US dollar, and American product sales in Egypt and Egypt to 120. Assuming it changes unchanged, what happens if the Egyptian pound depreciates to this fine to a dollar? Well, it used to sell for 120. Uh, so has, how much was the dollar? How much was it in dollars? Well, four times uh, 30 is 120, so we know it costs 30 dollars. Now we've got five. So if it was 30 dollars and each dollar was worth five Egyptian pounds, then it's going to be 150. Simple math exchange rates there. Shouldn't be a problem. Final question in the paper. Well, in fact, as my note says, this question was removed from the paper. Uh, that can be for many reasons. The answer, there was actually no correct answer in this case, because I wish I could see what that makes sense. Uh, don't do question 30, it's been removed from the paper, so don't really worry if you didn't get a right answer there. There is a problem. Um, on that note, we're ending the paper. Uh, thank you so much for listening, and I'll be speaking to you soon.